So, you're positive that your body is all perfectly symmetrical. Surprise, surprise. Even some paired body organs still don't work equally and compete for dominance all the time. Your face, for example. You probably already know your best side. But if not, you can use special apps that will take a picture of your face and split the image into the left and the right section. Then, it will mirror the images to create two separate symmetrical faces. One face will show you what you'd look like if the right side of your face were the dominant one. And the other will show the left side option. Usually, these two pictures don't look a lot like your actual face. But one of these faces reminds you a little more than the other. That's the one based on your dominant side. Some of the app developers analyzed the images and suggested that the left side of the face of most humans expresses emotions more intensively. That's why it seems more aesthetically pleasing to other people. But no worries, there are plenty of natural massage techniques and exercises to make your face look more symmetrical. For example, puckering your lips into a tight O will help balance facial muscles. Or you can open your eyes as widely as possible, stick out your tongue, and raise your eyebrows. This exercise also helps release muscle cramps from excessive talking and improper chewing. Want to make your jawline more defined and improve the tone of your vocal cords? Yogis have an exercise for that. They call it Jiva Mudra, or Lion's Pose. Open your mouth wide, lift your tongue, and roll it, and press it against the hard palate. Look at the tip of your nose while you're widening your mouth. Try to breathe only through your nose during this exercise. Try gradually inhaling deeper and holding the air for longer with each time. Eyes don't work in perfect symmetry either. Your brain has a preference for which one of them takes the most information. Let's find out your dominant eye right now. Keep your spine and head straight. Stick your arms out at eye level and make a triangle in the air in front of you with your hands. Focus it on an object in the distance, a clock for example. Close your left eye. If you can still see the object in the center of the triangle, your right eye is your dominant eye. If the object isn't there, your dominant eye is your left eye. If the object isn't centered, no matter what eye you close, you might have mixed ocular dominance. Was that fun? Here's another test for you. Extend your arm and form a circle with your thumb and index finger. Pick an object on a wall. Keep both eyes open and center this object inside the circle. If one eye is dominant, the object will move outside the circle. So, if for example the object seemed to move when you closed your right eye, then you have right eye dominance, and vice versa. The next test will help you quickly find out your dominant eyebrow. Stand in front of a mirror, try to lift only one eyebrow, and then try to lift the opposite eyebrow. You probably have better control over one of them. But don't worry if you don't have control over either of them. You can develop this skill if you practice in front of a mirror. As for your hands, you probably already know your dominant one. There's no country or population on this planet where left-handed people are the majority. Most people in the world, about 85 to 90% are right-handed. That's why most tools like scissors or knives and even books are designed with right-handed customers in mind. Studies found your dominant brain side defines which ear you use for your cell phone. Among the right-handed participants of the survey, 68% claimed they held their phones to their right ear, while 25% of polled people used the left ear, and only 7% had no preference. The result was different for those who are left-handed. 72% of polled people use their left ear while talking on their cell phones, 23% use their right ear, and 5% used both ears. It's all clear with hand dominance. But did you know, you also have your dominant leg or foot. This information can be useful to you if you're engaged in sports, like snowboarding or dancing. Or you just do stretching to sit on a front split. Usually, if one is right-handed, then one must be right leg dominant. But of course, there are exceptions. You can check which of your feet is dominant. Squeeze a pen between your right big toe and the second toe and try to write your name on a piece of paper. Or if it's too hard, just try to draw a circle. Then try the same thing with your left foot. Now compare the two pictures. One of them probably looks better than the other. So your dominant foot is the one that writes better. Around one lucky percent of folks have equally dominant hands and feet and can use them equally well. 
The name of this rare condition is ambidexterity. You can try to develop this skill by special training techniques. Your dominant nostril is the nose hole you're breathing through the most. It changes several times during the day, depending on your brain activity. You might not notice when exactly your nostrils take turns in the lead role, but you can find out the current dominant nostril with this simple test. Place your finger on the right nostril and pinch it. Then inhale and exhale slowly through your left nostril only. And now do the same thing with your left nostril. If it's easier to breathe through your right nostril, it means that it's more active at the moment. Of course, this test should only be done when you blow your nose and you're healthy. Otherwise, mucus can distort the result. Your body flexibility can also develop asymmetrically, especially if you don't do stretching exercises regularly. Can you grasp your left hand with your right hand behind your back? And what about the opposite position, when your left hand is reaching from above and the right one from below? If you find these two tasks equally easy, congrats! You're probably a superhero! To balance the flexibility in your left and right body sides, you can quit the habit of sitting or standing in asymmetrical poses for too long. Try to sit with an even spine and feel the pleasant vibe throughout your back. Avoid leaning on your right or left elbow. Or you can do that grasping exercise regularly to stretch more. If you prefer to sleep on the side, you probably have a favorite one. Your muscle memory forces your body to return to the sleeping position that was recorded as the most repeatable. So, if you ever decide to retrain yourself to sleep on your back, get ready to spend a few nights feeling uncomfortable. But if fetal position is your thing and you don't want to get rid of it, experts recommend putting some pillows between your knees and arms to minimize tension. Now what about your ears? Do you think they hear equally well? Well, it depends on many factors. The left and right ears process sound a little differently. The right ear responds more to speech and logic, while the left ear is more focused on emotional perception and music. Scientists believe it's because the left hemisphere of the brain processes primarily speech, while the right hemisphere processes creative and emotional signals like music and other arts. When a male hears a female voice, the auditory section of his brain gets activated. This means that female speech sounds more like music for the male brain. But when the same male brain hears a male voice, it will use the brain part responsible for speech processing. One of the explanations of this phenomenon is that the female voice is just more complex than the male voice. The vocal cords and larynx of women and men have different sizes and shapes. Also, females tend to have a greater melody in their voices, causing a more rich range of sound frequencies. If you don't have special equipment but want to check if it's true, try tracking your overall sensation in the ears and the brain while listening to music. Then, listen to some male's voice and feel the difference in sensations. Memorize or write down this difference, and then listen to some melodic female voices. Try to understand if it feels more like listening to music or speech. And finally, your heart is a dominant body organ 24-7. It's the only muscle that never gets tired. So it makes sense to always treat it gently. Okay, look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah, right in the eye. See that little fold of tissue in the inner corner of both of your eyes? Well, get ready for this. It was actually once a third eyelid, or nictitating membrane. You can see it today in snakes or lizards, for example. The third eyelid was used for the same purpose as the other two, although it's unclear whether humans ever even had it fully grown. This membrane wasn't as thick as the two eyelids we have, and it could moisten the eye without obstructing the view. Right now, all we have left of it is this tiny fold in the corner of the eye, and most likely in the future we will lose it altogether. And maybe we'll finally stop waking up with that yucky crust that forms in our eyes overnight. Now, while you're still in front of the mirror, look lower. Lower. And lower still. Yeah, those are your toes. Say hello and goodbye. Scientists believe that, in some more or less distant future, we'll get rid of our toes completely. Our ancestors, the ancient primates, needed toes to climb trees more efficiently. They used both their hands and feet to grab tree branches. 
You can see it today in most monkeys and apes. They have longer and more flexible toes, along with flappier feet that allow them to get a hang on branches. Their feet mobility also lets them grab objects from the ground if necessary. For us humans, even lifting a pen we dropped on the floor with our toes is a complex task. But not for our primate relatives. Humans have evolved along a different route. We started walking upright and climbed down from trees, making rigid feet and shorter toes more of a necessity over time. Today, we still use our toes for balance when rolling from the balls of our feet to the tips of the toes, but our balance is now much more centered. It first moved towards our inner feet, which resulted in our pinky toes becoming so tiny, and the big toes, well, so big. As the balance moves away from the toes entirely, though, they are more likely to get fused together in the future. Now, turn around and look at your gorgeous behind. If you've ever fallen off a skateboard or slipped on an icy patch, you must remember what a terrible thing it is to hit that tailbone on a hard surface. Luckily for us, scientists predict it's going to go away pretty soon in the course of evolution. A tailbone is a feature that was left to us by our primate ancestors, too. And, yet again, they needed their tails to achieve more mobility among tree branches, using them to fling themselves from tree to tree. It's hard to say when humans drop the tail to never pick it back up, but facts are facts. The only thing we have reminding us of those glorious tree-jumping days is the pretty useless bone at the lower end of our backs. Okay, back to the face now. Open your mouth and say, ah. If you're a lucky individual to have no wisdom teeth, then you can be proud knowing that you're a product of evolution going strong. As you might know, teeth are the only part of the human body that doesn't repair itself. So if you lost all your teeth back in the dark times with no dentists around, the only choice you had was to eat liquid food. Not cool. Dentists believe that nature gave us wisdom teeth as a replacement for old, worn-out teeth we've had since childhood. That's why they grow so late in our lives. Today, though, with all the progress dentistry has gone through, we tend to keep all or most of our teeth intact until a very old age. And even if we lose some, we can always replace them with new ones. That makes wisdom teeth a vestigial thing. And they seem to understand that, since more and more people never have to go through the ordeal of teething as grown-ups. Speaking of teeth, our entire jaw has been changing for the past, oh, 10,000 years, and is predicted to change even more quite soon. In fact, it's been the fastest changer of all our body parts. Back in the day, when early humans survived by hunting and gathering, they needed massive, powerful jaws and bigger teeth to chew through raw meat and grind plants. As they came to cooking and then farming, their food became less tough, and so their jaws became smaller to fit the current needs. As time went by, our jaws shrank more and more, and they're likely to continue doing so in the future. With lots of processed foods that don't need much chewing, humans of the future are probably going to have more delicate facial features with thin jaw lines and smooth cheekbones. Some body parts are not going away, but making a comeback instead. A hundred years ago, fabella, a tiny bone in the back of the knee, was only present in around 11% of people, and scientists thought it would disappear entirely pretty soon. But, against all odds, the brave little bone has made it into the knees of a whopping 39% of modern people. It's still unknown why exactly the fabella returned. But the most popular opinion is that we've grown taller and heavier than our ancestors. That much is true. As our diet became better and more nutritious, we learned to live longer and grow taller. We're now probably at the peak of our evolutionary height. And the fabella might have appeared in our bodies to provide a smooth surface for the tendon behind the knee to slide on, reducing friction and lowering the chances of damage because of wear and tear. Speaking of becoming bigger, let's get you back to that mirror, shall we? Flex a little bit. Ooh, nice biceps there. But unfortunately, not as nice as your ancient ancestors were. Not everything about evolution is 100% good for us. It's just a set of features that adapted best. 
And that's the case with our muscles. They've grown smaller and weaker with time, especially in our upper bodies. In ancient times, humans needed big and strong muscles to do a lot of handiwork. From hunting and schlepping their catch home to crafting tools and building shelters. Later, it didn't grow easier. Much the opposite, in fact, plowing fields and building complex structures required a lot of physical strength and endurance. But as the technological progress started booming, physical capabilities gave way to brain power. And machines began doing a lot of work for us, most of it even better than us. We shifted more towards sedentary lifestyle, spending more and more time in front of computers. And our muscles have been growing steadily smaller because we simply don't need them as much anymore. It's highly likely that, as the progress goes further, we'll become much slenderer and have more trouble gaining muscle mass. Our brain is of particular interest because it's been changing in a kind of a strange pattern. Our distant ancestors had a rather small brain at first, but the close relatives of humans, the Neanderthals, obtained a larger brain than the average modern human has. In the course of evolution, human brain grew larger. But in the more recent centuries, it started shrinking, and no one knows exactly why. Some experts say it might have to do with the change of our lifestyle and social connections. Early humans, especially hunter-gatherers, had to remember every plant and animal they saw, their properties, and how to use this or that thing. They were more generalist having to learn everything their parents knew and find out more on their own. The modern human is more specialized in a certain area, delving deeper into some narrow subject while relying on their peers for the rest. Where ancient humans worked in groups in which anyone could potentially replace anyone else, we gather in teams where each member has their own specific task and is irreplaceable. Still, brain size doesn't seem to matter that much, because orcas and elephants, for example, have bigger brains than us, which doesn't make them more intelligent. Happier? (laughs) I'm guessing yes. And if we venture further into the unknown, meaning millennia from today, we might even develop some pretty unbelievable traits. Some go as far as to say that if the tendency for the sea levels to rise persists, humans might adapt to living in water. We might evolve to have webbed hands and feet to swim better and develop gills to be able to breathe underwater. Or, if we go into space and start colonizing other planets, we will inevitably have to adapt to their conditions. Mars, for instance, has lower gravity and a much colder climate. It will probably make humans taller and lighter but also may cause them to grow much more body hair to keep warm. And planets with stronger gravity and higher temperatures will, on the contrary, turn humans into stocky, sturdy, and likely hairless creatures. The possibilities are endless. Hey, maybe due to social media, we'll just turn into little blobs with big eyes and thumbs and not much else. So much better for texting. Hmm, hope not. Your body actually glows! It emits a super faint light that's at its strongest at around 3 to 4 p.m. The sad news is that this glowing is 1,000 times less intense than what your eyes can see. Humans are the only animals that have chins. Even our closest genetic relatives, gorillas and chimps, lack this small piece of bone that extends forward from the jaw. Their lower jaws slant down and back from their front teeth. Scientists still haven't figured out this mystery. The opinions about why people are made this way differ. Some researchers think chins help us chew our food. Others are sure they have something to do with speaking. A few of us think it's simply a special place to grow a goatee. The most abundant element in the human body is oxygen, at 65%. But it also contains lithium, cobalt, gold, and uranium. The rarest one of all is radium. On average, humans yawn 20 times a day. Partially spontaneously, for example, when you're tired, but sometimes when someone yawns near you. Scientists think it could be a thing called social mirroring. Usually, when animals mimic each other, they recognize some action as useful, so they decide to do it too. With humans, it happens when someone crosses legs, laughs, smiles at you, or... 
Your stomach acid breaks down the foods you eat and turns them into easy-to-digest particles. It also stops nasty pathogens and microbes that could make you sick. In fact, your stomach acid is so strong that it can even dissolve bone and metal. Don't start munching down on your soda cans, though. That's probably not going to end well. Your brain has more than 86 billion nerve cells. They're all joined together by 100 trillion connections. That's even more than the number of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. There's a good chance you can guess someone's name based on how they look. Researchers showed portrait photos to a group of people with four names written below. They were asked to choose the right name for this or that person. The law of chance says you'll guess it 25% of the time. But in this research, people got the names correct at a rate of 25 to 40%. And there were more than 94,000 faces shown. Let's say a man is called Bob. People will expect for him to have a rounder face than Tim. They expect Bob to be more jolly and ready to hang out with people. It has to affect his facial appearance in some way. A woman called Catherine can be considered more serious, studious, and concentrated. That could eventually influence her facial muscles as well. When ancient Romans flexed their biceps, they thought their muscles looked like mice. That's why the word muscle translates as little mouse in Latin. Your left lung is smaller than the right one because it shares space with your heart. Experts used to think that we can only distinguish 10,000 smells. In fact, a recent study found human beings can recognize one trillion smells. Millennials, or people born between 1981 and 1996, are more forgetful than older people. The main cause of their forgetfulness comes from higher levels of stress. So come on, dude, chill out, okay? Some scientists think that the purpose of fingerprints is a better grip, but others believe they're there to help wick water off them and allow the skin to stretch when needed to protect it from damage. There's also a theory saying that fingerprints improve the sense of touch. Hot coffee can taste better than cold coffee. Your taste bud receptors are most sensitive when your food is at or a little bit above room temperature. Hot coffee can then seem less bitter because taste buds that detect bitterness are more sensitive when the coffee is cold. The biggest molecule in the human body is the chromosome 1. A human cell has 23 chromosome pairs, and each chromosome 1 is made of 10 billion atoms. You inhale 25 sextillion molecules in just one breath. That's 25 followed by 21 zeros. When you're walking faster, at some point, you'll feel the natural urge to start jogging. Your body wants to have a stable state, whether you're running or walking. So, if you're walking fast, it will unconsciously force you to start running. One theory is, we use more energy when walking faster than running. So, that's one of the ways the body saves energy. Your pinky is a powerful little thing. Without it, your hand would lose a significant part of its power. Your index and middle fingers cooperate with your thumb to grab and pinch. And your pinky, together with your ring finger, provides grip strength. The fattiest organ in your body is your brain. Fat makes up at least 60% of its dry weight. This quality got the brain to the Guinness World Records. The organ contains around 25% of your body's cholesterol, which is vital for the brain's well-being. Your bones are four times harder than concrete. The strongest bone in your body is the femur. It can support up to 30 times the weight of a grown-up person. Even crazier is that our bones are made up of composite material, meaning they're both hard and elastic at the same time. Your fingernails grow twice as fast as your toenails. It would take 15 and a half months for your toenails to grow one inch, but only seven months for your fingernails to get this long. The outer layer of your skin is thicker on your feet than on other parts of your body. The heart has its own electrical system and can continue beating even when it's disconnected from the body. The vessels in your body are long enough to circle the earth twice or more. The idea that we use only 10% of our brains is a myth. At any given time, you use almost 100%. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to perform simple tasks like drink a cup of coffee. More than 70% of your brain consists of water, and it needs 20% of your body's oxygen supply. The average lifespan of one eyebrow hair is four months. The body of a 110-pound person 
contains 40 tablespoons of salt. If you ironed out all the wrinkles in your brain and laid it flat, it would be the size of a pillowcase. The brain wrinkles as there's not a lot of room in the skull, so it folds over itself as it grows. By the way, don't do that pillowcase thing with your brain. Trust me on this one. We spend 40% of our life with our eyes closed. Most of that time is when we're asleep. But don't forget to count blinking, too, or while driving. You produce around 85,000 pints of spit in your lifetime. That's enough saliva to fill around 500 bathtubs. Enough said. The highest blood flow isn't actually in your heart, and it's not in your brain, either. It's in your kidneys. It's super hard for us to grasp just how small an atom is. But think of it this way. Your body is made up of a staggering seven octillion atoms. Yeah, doesn't that look like a seven being chased by a whole mob of zeros? For adults, the blood makes up seven to eight percent of the total body weight. About 55% of your blood is liquid plasma. The rest is red and white blood cells and platelets. They form clots and prevent bleeding. You can't swallow and breathe at the same time. The food you swallow and the air you breathe go down the same part of your throat at first. Only a bit deeper does the passage split into the esophagus for food and liquid and the trachea for air. When you swallow, your airway gets automatically closed off. This prevents you from accidentally inhaling food, but occasionally it still happens. There's a name for the growling sound that your stomach makes when you're hungry. It's called borborygmy. It takes six to eight hours for food to travel through your stomach and small intestine. That's because your body is trying to absorb all its nutrients. The idea that the tongue has flavor zones is a myth. All taste buds can detect five tastes, but some receptors are more responsive than others. Human beings are the only animals that willingly delay sleep. Just make sure you get enough. <laughs>